Canola School on realagriculture.com, supported by Bear Crop Science. Earlier on uh, in, in bud, budding stage, in, in the piece in particular, we were starting to get some elevated counts um, and actually some, some pretty dramatic looking numbers in, in the field and some, uh, some fairly impressive damage. We were walking into fields and seeing three to four Ligus bugs feeding on a, on a bud cluster and uh, seeing you know, a fair bit of aborted, aborted buds in, and uh, just some of the telltale signs of Ligus feeding. When we actually got the sweep nets out, uh, it was pretty rare that we were seeing anything over about 10, 10 uh, adult Ligus per, per 10 sweeps, uh, which is kind of the one of the threshold numbers we'd, we'd seen bandied around earlier on for that stage. Uh, and, and I guess you can attribute some of that to your eye going to where the insects are in the field and, and where the damage is happening. So we fielded quite a few questions actually about whether or not we should spray them. And typically, you know, unless, uh, unless your numbers are, you know, uh, like well over, well over 10 per 10 sweeps and, uh, and your growing conditions are are, are good. Uh, it's it's typically not an, an economical application to be spraying at, uh, at at the bud stage in particular. Later on, once we get into uh, and actually, I should qualify that by saying that if your crop is not coming into flower at all, uh, and you're under some kind of moisture stress or or your numbers are you know exceedingly high, then you know then we're looking at an economical application. But typically, they, it's not really there. Canola will compensate for for, for that early damage quite well. Um, it, obviously moisture stresses uh, and, and, and plant stands will have a, and thinner plant stands will have a lot to do with that as well. As we move into you know later later flowering and into pod set uh, that's when our thresholds become a little more hard and fast where you know with an application of around with an application cost of 15 to 16 dollars an acre and you know uh, 10 to 12 dollar canola your thresholds kind of drop into that 15 uh, 15 Ligus nymphs for 10 sweeps. Yeah, our, our numbers are typically larger earlier in the season and in the piece. Uh, I haven't really been seeing or hearing much for, for any real dramatic numbers across, uh, across the prairies. And I know in, in southern Alberta where they're out doing you know, heavy monitoring for the, uh, for the seed pod weevil. They're also keeping an eye out for Ligus as well, and you know both both insects being being uh, piercing sucking insects, they'll have an additive effect to each other. So that's where we kind of start to blend those those thresholds a little bit as well with the uh, particularly with seed pod weevil and uh, and, and Ligus. We tend to see more, especially early feeding of Ligus in in the piece than the rest of the prairies. Um, and I don't know if we can attribute that to uh, the climate or, uh, or, or the fact that our rotations are significantly tighter in, in the piece than they are on the rest of the prairies. Um, and we only actually get one generation of Ligus in the piece. That's, I guess, another factor as well. Uh, in southern Alberta, they, they, they quite easily see two, genera or two, yeah, two complete generations of Ligus in a, in a single growing season. Their pressure is a little bit more spread out. Ours tends to be maybe a little bit more focused. Especially once once we start seeing a lot of our, our nymph, our numbers of nymphs climbing in in the crops, uh, you know, significant rain events can knock them to the ground where they're a lot more you know easily preyed on by by predators, uh, natural predators that would be in the field anyway. Which is another reason why we don't want to be spraying unless we're you know at those those economic levels. Uh, we do a whole lot more damage to our beneficial beneficial insects and, and wasps than we do to you know a, a transient pest population so we I guess really want to remind people to be cognizant of the you know the damage they can do to their their populations of, of natural predators uh, yeah that's that's very important um, making sure that you're not just walking into the edge of the field and and doing your one like one set of 10 sweeps there and coming up with an astronomical number uh could especially with something like ligus could be you know a, a, a very localized problem go go to at least five or six different places in the field uh try to get a couple hundred meters out into the crop i know it can be a little difficult with a you know fully potted uh, canola crop it gets a little tangled it's good exercise but uh 
we, we want to make sure that those numbers are actually all the way across the field and not just a, a border effect, uh, especially if you've got a field of alfalfa right next door that's, that's just been cut, they're, they're going to move in. Uh, and if we can limit an application to you know, a couple of headland passes or, uh, or just one side of the field, we'd, we'd certainly prefer that. <laughs>